Hey Dream Chasers, it's JC, and it's time for some Twitter discourse. Yay! So, I don't really want to make this like a drama channel. I try to avoid that when I can. And when I weigh in on a controversial topic, I try to make sure it's something important and I do my best to be thoughtful and empathetic and not really feed into the drama, but take part in a meaningful, mature conversation. So what important topic are we covering today? Yeah. So basically there's this tweet about how you shouldn't buy cheap art supply sets for kids. And you know what, hold on, let me just find the tweet so we're on the same page. All right, here it is. Anyway, the idea that the supplies in those sets are really cheap and instead of spending the money on a bunch of really low quality things to find out what the kid is interested in and buy them something a little nicer for around the same price of just that one thing. But a lot of people criticize that suggestion as being elitist and classist and privileged because if you grow up poor, you weren't getting Prismacolors. You're getting one of these babies. That's right, I got it. I got the forbidden art set. Okay, so a lot of people can't afford really fancy art supplies, but they want to encourage their kids and help them develop their creativity and show them that you know they care about their interests. And a lot of artists weighed in to say that they have really fond memories of using sets like this, and they loved experimenting and, and using up all the supplies without having to worry about you know saving them because they're precious. And that's really great, honestly. But from what I remember, the dude is right. These suck. And before anybody gets pissed off and calls me privileged, I grew up on welfare, so I don't want to fucking hear it. You're allowed to be poor and think that cheap things suck. But honestly, I don't really remember that much about why I didn't like these. I, I vaguely remember the markers drying out really fast, and I was probably using lined paper because no one thought to buy me paper to go with my art supplies. Uh, but I'm gonna test them out now and see what I think. Uh, because, you know, I'm always saying stuff like, oh, you don't need fancy art supplies to make good art. Meanwhile, I'm over here struggling with like Prismacolors and Copics, so I think it's time I actually put that to the test. So the biggest change, other than 30 years of experience, is I'm not gonna be drawing on lined paper this time. I'm gonna be using some Canson mixed media paper. I got this at Walmart for $5, and if you take anything away from this whole thing, please, if you're gonna buy some art supplies, consider buying them some paper. It doesn't have to be the most expensive paper just something made for art because printer paper and lined paper just doesn't cut it. That's that's my little PSA, uh, but I'm ready to get started and make some art, so let's, let's do it. All right, I will say, regardless of how you feel about these things, it is fun to crack one open. I felt so cool and fancy. And guess what I still do? I still feel cool and fancy. I have a briefcase full of art. I, I remember this already. The things do not stay in place. Uh, so, all right, let's check out what we got. So we have all these markers here. Uh, we have, I don't know what this is. Some kind of gel. Maybe I should look at the list on the front. I don't, I don't know what all this is. What's that? There's a ruler, which is always cool. Oh yeah, see, stuff always migrates. I think that was the other thing about these that kind of made me nuts. Um, we got a ruler. We have a paintbrush. It's a pretty, pretty cheap little paintbrush. Uh, we have a pencil and we have a pencil sharpener. So um, I, I guess, you know, technically we could make the rule, I had, I had like other pencils and stuff, but we can make the rule only the supplies in the kit. So the eraser, the pencil, I think that's a great idea. Uh, we have a, a little, is this a stapler? I love that like, me as a small child, I need to staple like six things. Um, and uh, I'm gonna waste a stapler trying to put it back together. Um, little, little scissors, safety scissors. Uh, what are you? Is this like white out? What is it? Oh, God, I don't even know. It's like goop coming out. Some white, white goop in there. I have, to, I have to figure out what these are. I have no idea. I don't even remember these being in these sets. 
Uh, and then we've got our little watercolors here. Uh, our, our very, very small colored pencils. Pastels, like oil pastels. They, they basically feel like crayons, they feel waxy. These also, I think, are just like legit crayons. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff here. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make art with each supply. All right, so here is my final piece. I wasn't sure what to draw, so I thought, let me draw what seven-year-old JC would have drawn, which is Rydia from Final Fantasy IV. Uh, and you know, it's not bad, but uh, it feels unfinished to me. And I think that's because the supplies really just didn't lend to layering and sort of building the way nicer supplies do. So I used colored pencils on her dress and her skin. Uh, I started to on the sleeves and then I went over that with uh, the oil pastels. And you could tell I really just couldn't build up the layers with, with those colored pencils or the pastels. Uh, they, they were like waxy and cheap and so the more I kept trying to add layers, it just nothing was showing up. So they're very faint uh, and kind of light. And uh, the oil pastel started to get like chalky, and I, so I gave up on those uh, because it just it just wasn't letting me build anymore there either. Although you could tell the sleeves are built up a little bit more than than the pencils. Uh, and then on the hair, uh, I used colored pencils, and I was like, I don't want to go through this process again. So I used marker to to kind of uh, bring bring the color out, make it pop a little more. And uh, you could tell it's very streaky. It's not very well blended. Uh, I knew these markers wouldn't do that, but I figured I wouldn't mind that kind of streaky look on hair because it kind of gives it a texture. Uh, and then I used the marker to outline everything, kind of give it a colored outline. Uh, I used the crayon for the flame just because I wanted to use one of everything on this. And, uh, and then I used watercolors in the background and, and that was very disappointing. Um, the brush is terrible, the fibers were everywhere, I, I couldn't blend. Uh, the paint's very thin, um, you know, and and I wasn't expecting much out of this though, because these are these are supplies for beginners, for kids, uh, and I, I think they're fine for a beginner. I, I think I would have been really proud of this had I made it as a kid. That said, uh, I I do remember feeling frustrated that every time I tried to do a marker piece. It just looked really streaky and bad. I, I felt like I was terrible with colored pencils because I couldn't get them to look, you know, really good and, and detailed. Uh, watercolor, I was completely turned off to as a kid. So in a weird way, while I think this is fun to like experiment and get started, I think you do hit a point as an artist where you, you're you limited by your supplies. And I, I really, for a long time, I thought it was me. Um, and I'm not much of a traditional artist. I don't do a ton of traditional art, but I thought, let me let me do some something with uh, some nicer supplies and, and kind of compare and see the difference. And uh, you can you can really see you can really see the difference in terms of uh, the color pencils, especially what I was talking about with the layering. Uh, the the pigment just the more you add color pencils, like nothing happens. It's just waxy. Uh, as where this is a lot more layers of color pencils and it really pops. So uh, what I did here is I used color pencils for the dress, uh, and then I use these art sticks uh, for for the sleeves, which are kind of similar to oil pastels. Uh, not, not quite. Uh, I use that for the sleeves. Uh, and I use Copic markers for the skin and the hair. I, I knew I wasn't going to get skin or hair to look nice with, with markers out of this uh, and, and get that kind of blending. Uh, so, but but I, I was pretty confident for this that I could get it to work, and, and I think it, it looks pretty good. Uh, and then I, I also use markers for the outlines like I did here. Uh, and then the background is also watercolor, and I, I had a much better time. I, I could control the paint a lot more and, and blend a lot better. Uh, and then I also went back over that with a marker because I, I wanted it to kind of look more textured and have those ridges. Uh, and then the little flame, uh, I used this set of of oil pastels to make that. Uh, it's, it's not even my favorite part of the piece, like I probably wouldn't have used that, but I, I just wanted to use similar kind of supplies for the whole thing and uh, just to have like a, a good direct comparison. And um, oh, and I also added some, some colored pencils kind of on her face a little bit to, to bring out her eyes and stuff, uh, which I don't think I could have added. I tried to a little bit, you can kind of see I was like starting to sort of add shadow, like eyeshadow, and it, it just it wasn't showing up after a point. So, you know, I, I think these are fine to start with. And I, and I think pieces like this, like this is cute. There's nothing wrong with this. 
but I, I think... I think it's fair to say, after a few years of making art like this and, and really enjoying art, uh, if you can afford to, it's worth the investment because, because you can really see the difference in terms of quality. I spent a similar amount of time on these. I didn't really measure it, but uh, a couple hours on each one. And, and you can just see the difference in terms of, you know, what you can do with, uh, with nicer quality stuff. I think, I think critiques that these art kits aren't really for serious artists or, or kids who are in that stage of trying to become a serious artist, I, I think that's a fair critique. But I, but I also think it's fine to start with, I really do. I, and I think this is cute, I don't think there's really anything wrong with it. Uh, I, like I said, I, th I think after a certain point though, I remember being frustrated that I couldn't get better than this. Uh, and I think someone more talented than me, and someone who's, who's really practiced, probably could get more out of these supplies. For that matter, they could get more out of these supplies. So, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, you, you can make art with any supplies, uh, but you're gonna have an easier time with better stuff. And, and I think either way, uh, as long as as long as you're having fun, you're enjoying what you're doing, then that's all that really matters, right? Hopefully. So honestly, I think the original tweet about this was taken a little harshly, maybe a little too seriously, in my opinion. Like, sure, it's kind of privileged to turn your nose up at art supplies, but I don't think anyone meant don't buy one of these kits for a seven-year-old who's just starting out. You know, cause I had one of those when I was that age, but by the time I was 12 or 13, I was ready for an upgrade. I was pretty lucky because my dad was also an artist, so he did know better and he got me better supplies as I got older and I showed that I was responsible enough to, you know, take care of my stuff, but not everybody understands this stuff and is aware of, you know, the quality of art supplies. So I think that's really what the, the message was, because I think a lot of kids would appreciate an adult in their life taking enough interest to learn about that stuff and, you know, give them something that is really special instead of the same set they've been getting since first grade. That said, I get why people are emotional about this. Growing up poor, you know your parents are just doing their best, and the barrier to entry as an artist is already high enough. It's important to spread the message that you don't need the best supplies to make art, but that doesn't mean we can't help people upgrade when they have the means. That's just my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments, and until next time, chase your dreams. Peace. By the way, I don't want anyone to think that these are going to waste. I'm giving them to a friend of mine who has a small child who loves art and they will get used. And in a few years, if she still loves art, I might ask her if she wants an upgrade. Hey, have you um, become a patron of the one and only JCF Chase? Not only will they invite you on a, a one-way trip to um, Sega's new theme park, Sonic Land, uh, they uh, will also they'll 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 draw you naked you don't need to send them a picture they just know don't believe me that's fine you just gotta you gotta give you know at least a dollar a month to their patreon and they'll know they just know become a patron today okay